Okay, so one of the members from the Mechanic Mindset community had been going through our oscilloscope training and came up with uh, this problem here. So he posted in the community area that he'd managed to get a waveform up for a camshaft and crankshaft signal, which is what we've got here. However, the crankshaft signal wasn't looking too great. Now, this question has come up a few times mm. in various areas, and for some people, it can be difficult to decide whether that is a problem with the car or it's a problem with your oscilloscope settings. So we're gonna check it out today. So I'm connected up to this BMW B4 T8 engine, I believe, and we've got a few oscilloscopes here to try out. I'm currently connected up to the 2204A. We are in the back of the engine control module for the crankshaft sensor, and we've gone into the camshaft sensor directly here, measuring on channel A and channel B. Okay, so we've started the engine and we're on the recommended settings of 20 milliseconds per division and 20 volts. And you can see here that we've got both signals up on the screen. However, we have got that same issue that Anderson was experienced where parts of the waveform are missing. Now I'm gonna save all of the waveforms throughout this video and you can pick them up in our free YouTube waveform library. Just check out the link below. Okay, so that was the 2204A. What we're gonna do now is connect it up to the Hantec 1008C automotive oscilloscope. Now this is probably one of the cheapest oscilloscopes out there, which certainly will come up high on the listings when looking for automotive oscilloscopes. Okay, so we'll double click on oscilloscope. This is the default settings for this unit. So we just get back to the same time settings we had there say 20 milliseconds. Let's just try and bring that channel two down a bit and oh, just change the size of it there and bring channel one down and wow, I think that's even worse, isn't it? So we're gonna come back to these and see if we can improve them at all, but now what we'll do is connect up the PicoScope 4425A and see how this handles this particular test. Okay, so this is already looking better. Let's just turn on channel B as well. And you can see there that that is what this waveform should look like, okay? So no parts missing. However, one of the reasons that the other two oscilloscopes fall over when trying to take this measurement is this new type of crank sensor. It's been out for quite a while now, but the actual pull down bits are very, very, very small, okay? So you need an oscilloscope with plenty of sample rate and memory to get it correctly, which is what this oscilloscope has. Okay, so clearly this has no problem uh, taking that measurement and you should expect so. It is a high-end uh, automotive spec oscilloscope. However, what I'm gonna do is maybe show you what you could do to get a little bit more mileage out of these two oscilloscopes here. So what we'll do is we'll plug this 1008C uh, Hantec back in and we'll go with that first and after that I'll show you some little tricks that this thing has got up its sleeve to make a much better measurement. We're also really pleased to announce that we now sell automotive PicoScope products in the UK. So if you're looking to get one, then make sure you go and check out our website and get in touch and we'll help out for the most suitable kit for you. Okay, so let's just get back to where we were. Let's just increase the voltage setting for both of these waveforms. We'll bring the yellow one down a bit and then bring that blue one down. So what you can see at this point actually is that it's picking up all of the data required. Now the specifications on the oscilloscope are 2.4 million samples per second, that's its equivalent sample rate. However, the memory is only 4,000 samples, so that's how many samples it can collect on one page. So if we then increase that time base to where we were before, 20 milliseconds, you can now see that lots of data is being missed on this oscilloscope, okay? So that's where all the gaps are. And basically, if you think of the oscilloscope opening and closing its eyes to take a picture, at some points, it's not fast enough to actually pick the bits where that signal goes down. It's clearly not 
good enough for this measurement, okay? However, what we can do is maybe tweak some settings to make it a little bit better, a little bit more usable, okay? Now, one of the things you need to be aware of with the sample rate and the memory is that it's split between all of the channels. And in the case of this Hamtech 1008, it's eight channels, okay? And if you look here, all eight of those channels are switched on, okay? So if we start to switch these channels off, it should start to get a little bit better. So there's three, four, five, mm, arguably a little bit better, okay? Six, okay? Seven, and eight. Okay, is not really made a massive difference. However, there are some changes to the amount of data it is picked up, like in these areas here. However, it's still struggling. If we maybe turn off that last channel there, it has made it a bit better. And what if we turn off all of the channels and just leave one of them going? Yeah, again, it's a bit better, but it's not great. For this oscilloscope, what you're gonna to have to do to do a proper measurement on this uh, crankshaft sensor is bring that time setting down. So you can see now, look, we've gone down to five milliseconds. Pretty much all of the data is being picked up, okay? So if we just stop it there, you can see that there's our top dead center reference mark. However, we can't get one full rotation on the screen without losing bits of information. So you can see now, look, there's bits missing here, here. It's not the best, okay? So if we just go back down to five milliseconds per division, where we had a better measurement, I wonder if we can turn on channel two and hold enough sample rate to do a timing test. Yeah, I suppose at this point here, that is good enough. So what I mean by this, look, if we just stop it here, what, what you could actually do is to, to check the timing of the engine. You would need a known good waveform, but if you stopped it here, you could reference this point here to that small portion of the camshaft there. You just need to make sure that you are comparing the same parts of the waveform on your known good. The big problem here, look, is if we go up the time scale, we lose the resolution of that crankshaft sensor. However, you can still use it to check that the signal's good. Might not be so good for checking, uh, you know, the mechanical condition of the, of the engine and things like that. But I'm just gonna try it out of interest. Because this is an eight channel oscilloscope, I'm gonna put the rock key inductive pickup onto cylinder one. Okay, and this, this would be a pretty cool test if it works. And we'll take a look. Now, because we're not measuring directly onto the coil, we're not going to need an attenuator with this. You can see by turning on channel three that we've now lost some of that resolution again in the crank signal. I'm just going to bring the trigger onto channel three. Okay, that's what I wanted to do there, actually. Mm and it's not doing the, the greatest job. However, it is kind of working. Now, what I'm looking at here is the, the slack in the timing chain. What I've done is I've put a trigger on that cylinder one ignition coil, which is holding it there. And what we're looking for really is that there's not much float between the camshaft and the crankshaft. So, what you can see here actually is it's looking like it's, it's floating quite a lot. I don't think it actually is on this car. Again, it may be down to the oscilloscope. Maybe we can have another look when we plug in the um, picoscope later on, but this test could be quite a good way to actually check the mechanical condition of the timing chain um, slack and things like that. So, a bit challenging there with the hand tech. Let's plug in the 2204A PicoScope and see if we can get a better waveform out of that one. Okay, so we've connected up the 2204A now and this has only got two channels actually. This third one here is a waveform generator. Let's see what we can do. 
Okay, so even just on the 20 milliseconds per division there, we've already got a better waveform. Okay, so if we just stop that, this is only on one channel, remember. You can zoom in. Um, what you'll notice, that the main problem here is that it's not going all the way down to zero for some of those uh, strikes on the sensor, if you like, okay? So you can see as well that the shape of these parts of the waveform, they're not kind of the, the correct shape, they're like triangles, which is the classic case of you know, not enough sample rate or, or memory, a combination of the two really, okay? However, that is much, much better already. So let's just reduce that voltage, make it a little bit bigger. And what I'm gonna do now is turn on channel B we're going to go for the same voltage, 10 volts. And just by turning on channel B, you, you saw straight away how much that affected that crankshaft sensor signal, okay? It's now actually a little bit difficult to determine where that TDC reference mark is, okay? If we just zoom in to that signal now. There's lots and lots missing, okay? So that's down to that sample rate and memory. The maximum memory on this oscilloscope is eight killer samples, which is twice as much as the hand tech, but again, nowhere near enough to be performing measurements like this. You know, the PicoScope Automotive, 250 million samples of memory. That's more sample rate than that oscilloscope has alone, okay? So if we reduce that time base, it gets better, okay? Again, it's not the best way to do these measurements, but it's much better than the hand tech. For your timing reference points, you know, you could take a measurement from, you know, here to here and, you know, maybe count the teeth that are in between those two points. Again, just making sure that you select the same two points on your reference waveform, okay? So, you know, just simply counting those teeth is enough to get a good idea if the timing's okay of course comparing to your known good waveform. However, we've still not got two crankshaft cycles. We haven't got one full sweep of the camshaft there. Um, there is another setting on the 2204A. Let's just go back to this um, view here, 20 milliseconds per division. It is also possible to increase the sample rate, okay? So, We've got here target number of samples, 8,000 samples, which is actually about the same as the, the memory depth on this scope there. If we increase it, is it gonna make it better? Slightly, okay? So you saw there that it did get a little bit better. So again, it's, it's not the greatest at this time base. If you wanted to do that slack timing chain measurement that we just kind of tried to show with the hand tech, it may still be possible just using a lower time base. So if we go to a lower time base, we've got some better information there. Go and check out this video if you didn't already. I, I walk you through how to set up this measurement. But what we're gonna do is set an advanced trigger to the crankshaft. We can see the size of it there is 3.1 milliseconds. So I'm gonna to go to trigger, I'm gonna put it on auto and change type and we want pulse width. In fact, if we just start the oscilloscope up, make sure you're on channel A. Just gonna move this up a bit. If we increase this time, we should see it snap. There we are, to that gap. And it has, okay? Now what we're looking at is a live reading of the crankshaft being held and the camshaft here. And actually, you can see there, it's quite a lot of float in this chain. That's more than I probably would have hoped for. The measurement that we got on the hand tech must have been correct. So what you can see now, look, is that this camshaft is actually kind of floating you know, around about one full tooth compared to the crankshaft, which just shows we've got a bit of slack in that timing gear there. So that measurement is still possible on this oscilloscope. It's quite a nice way of doing it. 
The other thing I want to show you actually, I'm going to turn the trigger off a minute because the 2204A has another little trick up its sleeve. So if you are measuring here, we're using the oscilloscope memory, that eight kilo samples of memory, which is why this is, this is pretty bad. However, if we go up the time base, it's just going to get worse because we're stretching that memory even further. Again, 100 milliseconds per division, really bad, lots of missing information. If we go up to 200, everything changes, okay? So now what you can see is that it's changed to this progressive mode, okay? That's what it's called here, this progressive mode. And what that does then is it uses the laptop's memory. So if you zoom in, look, we've got actually an amazing image of that crankshaft sensor, okay? Again, well, much, much better anyway. Nice. So all in all, really, you know, if, if you just want a pain-free experience when it comes to oscilloscope diagnostics, then, you know, go for something like this, the PicoScope 4425A, automotive oscilloscope. However, if you want to learn and kind of stretch the limits of this little thing here, it is possible and you will learn a lot, okay? And then when you come to buy something like this, you will really appreciate what you're spending your money on.